Okay, so in this video we want to look at simplifying thirds. Okay, so in the same way as when you're working with fractions, if you're solving an equation, for example, and your answer turns out to be x equals 4 eighths, it wouldn't be correct to leave your answer as 4 eighths. We must always simplify our fractions, and we know that we can simplify fractions by dividing numerator and denominator by the same value. Similarly, if our answer turns out to be a third, we must always give our third in simplest form. So we need to look at, well, how do we go about simplifying a third and what does it mean for a third to be in simplest form? This is something you will need to do frequently throughout all sorts of different topics. It's important that we're able to simplify thirds. So a third is considered to be in simplest form if there are no square factors other than one. Obviously, one squared is one, so square root of one is one, um, but that's a trivial factor. If there are no square factors other than one under the radical. So we need to be familiar with our square numbers. You know, four is a square number because it's two squared. That is the square root of four would be two. Nine is a square number because it's three squared. That is the square root of nine would be three, etc. 144 is a square number, it's 12 squared. So square root of 12, uh, sorry, square root of 144 would be 12. So what we mean here is, for example, the square root of 12 is not a third in simplest form because four, which is a square number, is a factor of 12. Okay, so there is a factor of four under this um, square root sign, under the radical, um, which can come out of the radical to simplify the third further. Okay, so we need to use some of our properties of third. So we recognize that the number 12 is four times three. Now, the number 12 is also six times two. Okay, but six times two is completely useless to you because neither six, sorry, yeah, neither six nor two are square numbers. It's about looking for square numbers that divide into um, the number under the radical. So root 12 is the same as the square root of 4 times 3 because 12 is 4 times 3. And then we can use our properties of thirds that we talked about in the previous video which say that if we have the square root of AB it's the same as the square root of A times the square root of B. Okay, And so square root of 4 times 3 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And what that allows us to do by having identified the square factor and then splitting it into two separate thirds is now we have this, um, this I was going to say third, it's not actually a third because the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, And so square root of 4 can be simplified to 2 and so actually what we have here is 2 times the square root of 3. That is root 12 in its simplest form is 2 root 3. So it's all about looking for square numbers that divide into the number under the radical, that are factors of the number under the radical. Sometimes there won't be, and, and when there are no square numbers that go into the, into the value under the radical, then it's a third in simplest form. So for example, root 10, okay, well 10 is 2 times 5, and 1 times 10, but 1's a trivial other than 1, okay. Um, but neither 2 nor 5 are square numbers, so it doesn't help us to break this up as root 2 times root 5, because neither of those simplify. Okay, and so root 10 is a third in simplest form. Similarly, you know, root 21, okay, it's 7 times 3, but none of those are square numbers. Root 15, okay, it's 5 times 3, but none of those are square numbers, okay, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it's about square numbers that go into their value. Okay, so let's just focus on simplifying each of the following. So root 18, so 18 is 6 times 3, okay, but neither of those are square numbers. So focusing on these square numbers up here, which of these divide into 18? So 9 is a square number and it goes into 18. So in my head I'm sort of manually trawling through the square numbers. I mean, this one I can see 9 straight away, but you know, I'm thinking, okay, does 4 go into it? No. Does 9 go into it? Yes. Okay, good, I'm done. If 9 didn't, then the next, um, does 16 go into it? No, then the next square number is bigger than 18, and so I know it's simplified, it's in simplest form. But 9 does go into this, so we know that root 18 is square root of 9 times 2, okay, which means we can then break it up as root 9 times root 2, and root 9 we know is 3, and so this is 3 root 2. Now, you'll get quicker at this, you won't need to write out as many steps, you'll get to a point where you can just go straight from here to here, and that's fine. But I do want you to be clear about what you're doing, so that you're careful about what's actually happening. Okay, B. So, square root of 108. Alright, so I'm thinking, okay, 4, now 4 goes into 108, okay, so if I... If I just did that, okay, well, 4, 4 goes into 125 times and then into 8 2 times, so it's going to be 27. So I could do that. Don't write this down. I'm going to come back to it. That would mean that's root 4 times root 27, and so it is 2 root 27. 
But then if I think about 27, well, hang on, 9 is still a square number that goes into 27. So 27 is not in simplest form. Root 27 is not in simplest form. So I would then need to go, well, that's 9 times 3. And so that's 2 times root 9 times root 3. And so that's 2 times 3 times root 3, which is 6 root 3. Now, that's a really long-winded way to simplify that third. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, though. Okay, so if you identify 4 is a square number that goes into 108 and simplify that, you then must think when you get to this point, is that in simplest form or can I go further? Root 27 is not in simplest form, I can go further, I need to go again. Now we can do that more efficiently by making sure that at the beginning, instead of just finding any square number that goes into 108, we identify the largest square number that goes into 108. Okay, so 4 does go into 108, but let me see if anything bigger does. 9. Now 9 goes into 108. 108 is 12 times 9. Now the fact that both 4 and 9 go into 108 means that 4 times 9, 36 goes into 108. And that's also a square number. So that's actually the biggest square number that goes into 108. You might sort of just work your way through the list. 16, oh, I don't think so. Um, you know, 25 definitely doesn't. Um, 36. Okay, so actually 108 is 36 times, now again you might need to you know work on your numbers to, to think this through, well 30 times 3 is 90, it's getting close to 108, yeah and 6 times 3 is 18, so that's, yeah so 36 times 3 will work, and so then that's square root of 36 times the square root of 3, the square root of 36 is 6 times root 3, so 6 root 3. So there's nothing wrong with the first method I did, take out the factor of 4 first and so you get you know 2 root 27 and then take out the 27. You could also have done it the other way. You might have first of all recognized that this is 9 times 12 and so got root 9 times root 12 and so 3 root 12 but then recognize that the 12 is not simplified and so you need to keep going again. Okay. Um, so nothing wrong with if you don't find the biggest third that's okay. Just, just take out the third you've identified and then go again. Um, however, if you can find the largest third that goes into 108 first, that'll be a more efficient method in the long run. Okay, um, question, part C, 4 root 72. Okay, so I don't want you to get distracted by the 4. The 4's got nothing to do with the third. Remember, this is 4 times the square root of 72. We're focused on the 72 and whether there are square numbers that go into 72. Now, 72 is 2 lots of 36. So this is... 36 times 2. 36 being a square number, it's 6 squared. So we can split this up. We've just got, so I, know I haven't done anything with the 4. It's just 4 times this. Let's worry about that at the end. This is 4 times root 36 times root 2. Now root 36 is not a third at all, it's 6. So we actually have 4 times 6 times root 2, and so 4 times 6 is 24 root 2. Okay, so we actually didn't do anything at all with the 4 times. All we did is multiply it together with the 6 once we'd simplified our third. Okay, D. Again, let's not, go, let's not get confused by this 3 sixteenths. Okay, this is just 3 sixteenths times root 44. Now, if you need me to be clear about that, that's because root 44 over 1, which is just root 44. So let's just focus on the simplifying of the root 44. We'll worry about the 3 sixteenths later on. So this is 3 sixteenths times, now 4 goes into 44. That's 4 times 11. Now 11 is a um, prime number, so it won't be able to be simplified any further. Um, and so that's going to be good. So we've got 3 on 16 times root 4 times root 11. Root 4 is not a third at all. It's 2. Okay. And so now we can multiply these together, the non third parts together. 2 is 2 over 1. Now remember, you can do 3 times 2 over 16 times 1. So it'll be 6 over 16 and then cancel down. But actually, there's a common factor of 2 right here. You can cancel that 2 down with the 16. And so actually, we've got 3 eighths times root 11. Or if you want to write it back like it was at the beginning, we could then write that as 3 root 11 over 8, because remember, that's root 11 over 1, 3 times root 11 over 8 times 1. Okay, example 2, express the following as a square root of a positive integer. So this is where we want to work backwards. So rather than have a number times a third, we want to get to a point where it's just the square root of a number. So it's the opposite of simplifying. 
in its simplest form we're getting to this point, but we want to unsimplify it essentially. So what we want to think about is we want to be able to combine these together under a third. So we want to be able to think about, well, 5, this is 5 times root 3. Now 5 is the square root of what? Okay, so 5 is the square root of 25. So 5 times root 3 is the same as the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. And so therefore it's the square root of 25 times 3, which is square root of 75. So 5 root 3 is the simplest form of root 75. But in this example, we're reversing that process to write it as a square root of a single value, of square root of a positive integer. Okay, same process here with 7 root 6. We've got 7 times root 6. We want to write it as 1 third. So we want to think about how do we write 7 as a square root of something. So 7 is the square root of 49. And so therefore, square root of 49 times 6. Now, I might think that, oh, well, 50 times 6 is 300, so 49 times 6 is just going to be 6 less than 300, so it's going to be 294, okay? So in this case, you're not looking for your answer to be in simplest form. This would be simplest form, okay? But we are reversing that process. Okay, uh, practice today here from exercise 3A.